someone like Tini, but let me use him as an example. Maybe he feels that okay, if I don't get this certificate from this prest um, prestigious university outside Nigeria, maybe people will feel I'm not qualified or something. Is it because they want to just get this impression? That's why they're trying to get their certificate. Well, you're asking me a question that we can refer to the psychologist now, to be honest. I don't know what is their motivation. Different thing motivates different people. But like as I've said, does it matter? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I don't know what is their motivation, but whatever is their motivation, unfortunately, it's, it's coming to haunt many of them. And it's putting them yeah. in some kind of big challenge now that I don't know. That's a terrible. I wanted to ask uh what's the implication of what is happening now as regards to the Taubi's petition, considering that our sitting president also has a similar case. The implication is Nigeria could be shot up the ladder as in rank if the judiciary could sit up to follow what we're discussing here and say, well, this is what the law says. Remember, our law provides that even if you have already been sworn in, when the, in the discharge of the contentions regarding the process that led to you being elected and sworn in, that you can be recalled back. It has happened at the governorship level. It has happened at local government levels. It has happened at the uh, national assembly levels. It hasn't happened at the presidential level because it hasn't been challenged effectively. In fact, I am told that in 2007, the Supreme Court actually initially voted for against Yaradua versus three in his favor. But that one justice at the last minute changed his own vote which means it would have happened in 2007 the law says it so i don't believe that statement that ah how can you dethrone a sitting president even the president he swore to uphold the constitution and the constitution says if the court finds out that the process that led to you being here is not the right thing you're going to be removed i believe so I do strongly believe that Nigeria is in the verge of making history because if anything is to go by by what we are discussing here today and the court goes on to uphold it, it's history for Nigeria and it is good for Nigeria. People think it... Uh, now, remember that this election, there were three major candidates that contested for this presidency. APC, PDP, and Labour Party. And that... Even the vote given to APC by INEC, it's just somewhere a little above one third, isn't it? Now, what it tells you is that about two thirds of Nigerians, if we use that result declared as a representative case, by the time you bring the vote of other small, small parties and ANPP and PDP and Labour Party, you see that about two thirds of Nigeria says we did not vote this party. So the question you need to ask yourself is, will more Nigerians be happy if this particular thing is upturned or will they be angry? Because the whole prayer that will sustain the sitting president is prayer that will make, as it were, one third of Nigerians happy and two thirds angry. And it is challenging even for the judiciary because with the way the information is flying, what is happening in the court is still filtering. If you know that Nigerians are hearing, they are waiting to hear that kind of technicalities they will use to say every prayer that has been made. Remember the issue of dual nationality, the issue of certificate forgery, the issue of forfeiture, the issue of um, I mean, Columba, um, the information habit in 2003 or 1999, he submitted NYSC discharge certificate. And that this time around, he submitted NYSC exemption letter. So how could one person have both this discharge certificate and exemption? And the court knows that the world knows, even if it has not been presented well in the court,
court in terms of the technicality of the presentation of of um of the evidence the, the judge is somebody once says that aside from the letters of the constitution there is what is called the social justice will the judges allow someone a criminal to escape through technicalities will they think they have done justice even socially and constitutionally when they see a stark criminal who has a gun and pull the gun on somebody's face only to say that oh the law says that if i pull that gun and it is the third bullet in the in the in the in the distance i am free when it is obvious that he kills someone i don't know how court will look at it but i think that that those men in the judiciary they have work cut out for them to do they have work cut out for them to do indeed so i think the next thing we need to deal on is let's go back to this fct matter and trash the fct situation especially connecting it with the constitution because we have not really dealt with it connecting it with the constitution and precedents what happens in the case of buhari versus Obasanjo in 2003 and buhari versus Yaradua in 2007 and then what is the constitution saying so that our audience will understand all these points what has happened before for them to know whether their confidence will be high and their expectations should be high as we await the outcome of the judgment or whether they will hold their heart and say wow we don't have a good case here that's what i think what do you think people i can hear you Sorry. Okay, I said interesting know. times in Nigeria. Yes. We keep okay. hearing uh, different, different news as in different, different topics every day. Well, it's good that these things are unfolding. At least we we'll address them and address them once and for all. Um, we are looking forward to the new reform. You know, that the electoral act will still have to go some, you know, yeah, our cleaning. reform. So yes, we really want to them to consider mm. some of these developments because mm. I think we just have to learn from our experiences. All these things that we are seeing now, we just have to learn from them and see how we can work on our electoral act so that in the future we don't just keep continuing, you know, experiencing the same. Just like you said that your parents complained about the process. Your the grandparents. grandparents did. You yourself, you are doing. And what we are trying to do is not to allow our children to, to come and start experiencing all these things. You know, my happiness is just that the Nigerian youths are involved in this. You know, it has never happened in Nigeria, what we are seeing today, that people really want to see that change come and let it come fast. We don't want it to linger, to delay anymore. We've really had time to be patient with our politicians to see if they will ever consider the people, the ordinary man on the street. Look, at sometimes they do argue about how much our senators are in. But look at the ordinary people. People can't even afford three square meals. Some people can't even eat twice in a day. But, you know, some people just keep carrying everything. And when the election comes, they are ready to do anything just to get to that position. Even if they didn't go to school, they will forge and tell all sort of lies. Look at our former Senate president that didn't participate in an election. He became a senator. And he has been in that Senate for long. Some of them have spent above 20 years. They, they don't have any dream of quitting tomorrow. They just want to be there until their political career ends or they age. I don't know. That's I why they are so desperate. They can't do I think, anything. I think like the issue of that former Senate president, that's what I call really the, the virus of technicality. And I think the judges would also know that as I'm talking about social justice, Nigerians don't want justice to be sacrificed on the altar of technicalities. This is very, very important. 
because I think what happened at that level of the Supreme Court, if the Supreme Court ruled on technicality instead of um, after the fact, how was it filed? How was it submitted? And all those things. But the generality of the thing is that people know that this person did not participate in the primaries. So you cannot say that the Supreme Court broke the law. They did not break the law. But you see, if you want to find something, you'll always find it. If you want to find fault in anything, you can find fault in it. They found fault in the application through technicalities. And Nigerians have expressed their worry. In fact, a former justice of the Supreme Court complained and said that was wrong to be done by his colleagues. Because you need to ask yourself, what is the implication? How will the society benefit? What are we trying to do when we set up court of justices? What is it we are trying to achieve? To give smart criminals a leeway to perpetuate their crime? Or to make people say evil cannot thrive? as long as our courts are there. And listening to the judgment of this Nigerian senator who was involved in the issue of um, kidney transplant, whatever here in the UK. As I listened to the judge, I noticed that majority of the thing he was saying was more like, he was more interested in social justice he would read and say yes i've heard that you're so and so however more like he's saying my conscience is not going to allow me let you out on technicalities and what have you our judges should begin to get human face and begin to save nigeria with their pronouncements than doing things as it were that could encourage crime to continue that's my prayer and my pleading. To How do we even begin to build strong institutions? Because I think this it is can, really... It can start. The court is one segment of the... The judiciary is one segment that can shake up things. There are the kind of judgments the judiciary will throw out. By next election, every politician will we'll kill himself. Will sit up. Hmm. But there are the kind of judgments they will reel out, even if they find exit routes from the constitution it will harden the politicians next time. Yes. Does that make sense? So that's why I'm saying the courts, please, should begin to think on how they can use their own department, their own arm of the government to strengthen our institutions. What is the intent of the people who made the Electoral Act? Is it to create a leeway for smart politicians to rob and escape or to make our election, the integrity of our election to be established. What was it the intended? That is the spirit of the law, both our constitution and the electoral act. What was it in the first place that prompted Nigeria to invest as much as 300 and almost 400 billion, which is about $1 billion, about about 100 billion, am I right? About how many billion dollars? Mm -hmm. six, about 1 billion dollars. To get mm -hmm. IREV, what was it we intend to cure? Did we cure it in this presidential election? The judges should ask themselves that question. We should, will they allow INEC to explain themselves away? Hmm. Or will they say, INEC, a gentleman may, may lose his presidency because you messed up and slam that hammer and by so doing, jog up both INEC, both the National Assembly in the amendment of the Electoral Act and INEC in the execution of their duty, knowing that if you mess up and you near the court, they will cut you to size. Honestly. There was that former commissioner of INEC what I've forgotten his name, who used to come on, on, on media to say that a place like UK, it was the judiciary that cleaned up the electoral process. 
that judiciary so made it hard for them to continue to perpetuate their crime to the extent that if you hear that you're going to court, you have to skip. But in Nigeria, they actually tell you, go to court. Go to court. The, the mm. judges should ask themselves, why are people who are breaking the law bold enough to ask people to go to court? And why can't they sit up to stop mm. it? Mm. Why? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. We just I'm becoming, I'm becoming emotional about this now, but it's, it's painful. It's painful. It's really, really painful. Gloria, it's have painful. you got anything to say? No, ma'am. Okay. So, guys, we'll be rounding it up for today. We thank you all for joining. So, we'll yeah. keep holding our judiciary, our judges responsible because, you know, to fix Nigeria. We are just hoping that they will do the needful. If they can get it right this time around, I believe that the next election cycle, our politicians will sit up. They will sit up. They can't just come and contest and plan whatever they want to do because they believe that when they do it, they will just go scot free. They have you the see? judiciary, they have the judges. No, we don't want those things to just continue that way. We want you see? things to change. At least if our judiciary, if our judges can complain and deliver judgment the way it's supposed to be, honestly, our politicians will sit up. They will sit up. They will sit up. We won't continue this way again. Look at forgery everywhere. Look at everything that happened during this election. You know, people will depend on their talks to suppress voters. They use all manner of means, you know, just to prevent people from coming to cast their votes. And at the end of the day, they will tell you, go to court if you are not satisfied. Now we are in court and we are just believing that the judges will not fail the Nigerian people. Let them dispense justice. And that is just all we are asking. Thank you yeah. so much for your contribution, Dr. Etel. Thank, thank you, Gloria, thank for you. joining. You know, let, let me ask you, sorry, to say if, a sorry, thank you sorry to all if you don't mind. Going to the We'll be here again tomorrow. Me? Please do well to join and let's keep discussing and sharing our thoughts, hoping that a new Nigeria is already by the corner. Thank you all for okay. being a part of this program. Bye. All right, bye. Thank you all. Bye.